Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to create a custom music GUI where players in the game can choose their own music. So the way this is going to work, we're going to have a button down here. On this menu, the players can choose a song from the list right here. They also have volume control, so they can turn the volume up or down. If they're tired of this song, they can either choose a new one or stop it completely. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is insert a screen GUI into starter GUI. So to do that, just go ahead and locate it in the Explorer menu. And then you're going to click on the plus sign. We're going to be adding a screen GUI. Inside that screen GUI, we're going to start with two different objects. We're going to start with a frame and then a text button. To add those into the screen GUI, you're just going to click on the plus sign. First, we'll add the frame. For now, we're not going to worry about resizing it. Let's go ahead and add the text button first. So this button right here is going to be your music button. So that's what's going to open and close your frame. So you can go ahead and design that however you want to. The only part that's critical that you have to do is rename it. So go ahead and right click, press rename, and then rename it to music button. After that, all the other customization you can do with the properties menu, but I'll leave that up to you. Okay, and now for the frame, go ahead and select it. We're going to move this into the center of the screen, and then you can size it to whatever shape you want to. If you haven't already, I would recommend getting the Auto Scale Light plugin. This just makes it easy to scale the GUI objects so they look good on all screen sizes. If you don't have it, you can get it from the toolbox. So just go to the Home menu, click on Toolbox. On the drop down menu, make sure Plugins is selected. And then here, you're just going to search Auto Scale Light. And then press Enter. And then you're looking for the one that looks like this. Once you find it, you can just click on it, and then install. Once you have that installed, you can find it in the Plugins menu. To use it, you're just going to click on Unit Conversion, and then under the Size option, we're going to click Scale. And that's all you have to do. So whatever screen size you have, it's going to scale it to fit. Just like for the music button, you can customize this to look however you want to. The only option I changed for the frame was the style. I changed it from custom to drop shadow. After that, we're just going to add some of the different items you see on the menu here. So the first one is going to be like the menu title. To do that, that's just a text label. We're going to rename that text label to title. We're going to go ahead and scale it using the plugin. You can go ahead and use these boxes to resize it to whatever size you want to. Just to make it a little bit easier for the other objects so that we can use the same size, I'm going to go down under the properties menu, find the size option, and then change the first number to 0.95. So that's going to take up 95% of the frame. Some of the other options I would do for this title would be change the background color. So you can change this to whatever color you want to. Down under the text section, go ahead and choose a new name for it. So I just kept it simple and said music. And then the other option is going to be text scaled. After that, if you want to make any other changes, you're welcome to. The next thing we're going to do is add another text label where we're going to display the current song that's playing. So go ahead and click on the plus sign next to frame. We're going to be adding a text label. The first thing we're going to do for all these objects is scale them. So just go ahead and follow the same process, size, and then scale. We're going to rename this text label to current. And then for the size section, I'm going to change this first number to 0.95 again. That way it's going to be the same size left to right as our music title. And then I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. And we actually probably don't want it to be this long. Let's go ahead and drag it a little bit this way. The reason we made it a little bit smaller is so it doesn't overlap with the stop button. You can go ahead and customize this to look however you want to. For this one, for the background transparency, I changed this to 1. And then under the text section, I changed it to text scaled. I didn't worry about changing the text property yet because we're going to be doing that with a script. So if you want to, you can just leave it say label. All right, next, let's go ahead and add the stop button here. So to do that, go ahead and click on the plus sign. And then for this one, this is going to be a text button. Go ahead and scale it. For the size option, I chose 0 0.075. So just like this. And then we're going to choose the same option for the Y. So just make sure those two numbers are the same. Okay, that's going to give us a nice button. And we're going to drag it right next to our label. For this one, for the background color, I changed this to red. Down under the text section, we're going to change the text to stop. And then we're going to text scale. Okay, this next part here is going to be a scrolling frame. So go ahead and click on the plus sign. And we're going to search for scrolling frame. Let's go ahead and scale it. Go ahead and drag it to the position that you want, and then use the boxes to resize it. For the background color of this, I chose a gray color. Down under the scrolling section for the automatic canvas, we're going to change this to Y. And then for the canvas size, we're going to change this to 1. For the scrolling direction, we're going to change this to Y, because we only want to scroll up and down. We don't need to scroll left and right. Okay, so next we're going to add a grid layout to the scrolling frame. So we can click on the plus sign next to the scrolling frame. And we're going to add a UI grid layout. And before we get too much farther, let's go ahead and rename that text button. So this is the stop button. And we're just going to rename that to stop. We're going to end up adding all our songs into the scrolling frame. To help us get the sizing right, let's go ahead and add a text button so we can see what it's going to look like once it gets inserted. Okay, so that's obviously not what we want. So let's go ahead and check out the grid layout so we can change the size. For cell size, we're going to change that second number to a zero. And then for the X scale, we're going to change that to one. So it takes up the whole body left to right. And then for the Y part, we're going to start by changing that second number to a zero. And then for the up and down direction, let's change this to 0 0.2. All right, so that looks like a pretty good start. Once we add all the songs in there, if it doesn't look right, we can always go back here and adjust these numbers. Once you're done with the sizing, you can go ahead and delete that text button. And the final thing we have to do for this menu is add the volume controls down at the bottom. So first, we're going to add two text labels. So we're going to insert that inside the frame. Let's go ahead and rename this one to volume bar. We're going to scale that. So go in plugins, unit conversion, and then scale. Let's go ahead and drag that down to the bottom. And then we're going to stretch it out to whatever size you want. For this one, I'm going to change the background color to black. And then for the text section, I'm going to change this to blank. So just delete whatever text is in there. I'm going to add a text label inside the volume bar. So click on the plus sign and then add another text label. Let's go ahead and rename this one to volume green. 
For the background color of this one, I'm going to change it to green. And then down under the text section, I'm going to choose text scale. And then for the text, I'm going to change it to 50. The reason I'm choosing 50 is most songs start out at a default volume of 0.5, which is 50%. So that's why I'm choosing 50 for the text. For the size section, I'm going to change that second number to 0. And then for the X part, I'm going to choose 0 0.5. And then for the Y part, we're going to change that second number to 0. And then for the Y scale, that's going to be 1. Okay, and the final thing is these two buttons, the volume up and the volume down. So we're going to insert those inside the frame. So it's going to be text buttons. Go ahead and rename that new text button to volume up. Go ahead and go to plugins and then scale it. For the size section, for the first number here, I'm going to choose 0 0.075. And then go ahead and drag it to the right position. Down here for the text, this is going to be the plus sign. And then we're going to choose text scaled. Instead of repeating that process, I'm just going to make a copy of this one. So while it's selected, you can use Control D to make another copy of it. I'm going to drag that new copy over to the left-hand side. And then the only thing I have to change is the text. I'm going to change this from a plus to a minus. And then instead of volume up, this is going to say volume down. All right, so that's all the design work that we have to do. The last thing we do before we start with the scripting is going to be adding this music folder. So that's going to be directly inside the frame. So go ahead and click on the plus sign. And then we're going to add a folder. We're going to rename this folder to music. Inside this folder is where we're going to store all the different sounds that we want to give to the players. To find different sounds that you can use in your game, just go ahead and open up the toolbox. Change the drop down from plugins to audio. And then you can just select some of these options here. So to add it inside this folder, just make sure the folder is selected. And then click on the sound. So that's going to insert it inside the folder. To insert more, just repeat the process. So select the folder. And then click on the sound. After you choose all the sounds that you want the players to be able to choose from in the game, let's go ahead and start with the scripting. We're going to be using a local script. So go ahead and click on the plus sign. And then add a local script. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on the script. The first section of this code is going to be the variables for the different objects that we're going to be referencing. So the first one is going to be for the frame. Let's go ahead and say local frame. And that's going to be equal to script dot parent. So that's a reference for this frame right here. Next, we're going to make a variable for the scrolling frame. So we'll say local. And then I'm going to do a shorthand, scr, and then frame. And that's going to be equal to frame dot scrolling frame. Next, it's going to be the music folder. We'll say local music. It's going to be equal to frame dot music. After that, it's going to be the current label. We'll say local current. It's going to be equal to frame dot current. After that, will be the volume bar. We'll say local volume bar. It's going to be equal to frame dot volume bar. And then we're only going to be changing the green part, so we're going to reference that. So we're going to say volume bar dot volume green. After that, will be the volume up and volume down, so we'll say local volume up. And that's going to be equal to frame dot volume up. And then same for volume down, so local volume down. It's going to be equal to frame dot volume down. The next one is going to be the stop button. We'll say local stop. It's going to be equal to frame dot stop. And then finally, it's going to be the music button, which is going to open and close our menu. We'll say local music button. And that's going to be a little bit different. This one's going to be frame dot parent dot music button. The reason this one's a little bit different is because it's not inside the frame. So we have to go outside the frame and then reference the button. And the final variable for now is going to be a playing variable, which is where we're going to store the current song. We'll say local playing. And for now, we're not going to assign a value to it. When the player first joins into the game, we're going to hide the frame. So we're going to do that by saying frame dot visible. And we're going to set that equal to false. Let's go ahead and start by just opening and closing the frame. That's going to happen whenever the player clicks on the music button, which is this one right here. So we're going to start by saying music button. And then we're going to say dot mouse button one click. Colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. And all this function is going to do is reverse the visibility of the frame. So we're going to say frame dot visible. It's going to be equal to not frame dot visible. So all this line of code is doing is taking the current visibility and switching it. All right, so let's go and test out the game and see what we got so far. We'll go ahead and click on view and then open up the output to see if we have any mistakes while we're coding. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here and we can see the frame. If I click on the button again, then it disappears. So, so far everything's good. So let's go ahead and go back to the script. Right now, the current label is just displaying the word label. Let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to say current dot text. That's going to be equal to quotation marks. And then inside that, we're going to say currently playing. And then after that, we're just going to put a colon. To display all the different music options for the player, we're going to use a for loop to go through the music folder and then create a button for each one. To do that, we're going to say for underscore comma. And then we're going to say song in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put music, which is a reference for our folder. And then we're going to get all the different items inside of it by saying colon and get children. Outside the parentheses, we're going to put the word do and then press enter. For each song inside this folder, we're going to create a button for it. So we're going to say local track is equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a new text button. After that, we're just going to define some properties of this text button. The first one is going to be the parent property. So this is where it's going to be located. We're going to say track dot parent. And that's going to be equal to our scrolling frame. And then we're going to say track dot text. It's going to be equal to song dot name. After that, you can choose the font if you want to. 
track dot font is going to be equal to enum dot font and then dot and then you can choose one of these fonts finally we're going to say track dot text scaled and we're going to set that equal to true next we're going to add a click event on these buttons to a function we're going to do that by saying track dot mouse button one click colon connect and then function inside this function we're going to say current dot text is going to be equal to currently playing we're going to put that colon and a space and this time we're going to join that with some other text so we're going to do two dots and then we want to join that with track dot text all right so before we move on let's go ahead and test this part so we should have all the different tracks loaded into our menu and then when we click on it it should change the name on the text label all right so there we go so if we open up our folder we can see i have one two three four five six and on my menu here i have all the different options so i have all six options that loaded into the menu when i click on these options it changes the currently playing so right now it says currently playing and then the name of this one if i click on a different one it updates it up here if you don't like the way the name looks out of the toolbox you can always change it here so if you want to get rid of those parentheses or do anything like that you can change it over here all right so that part looks good so let's go ahead and work on actually playing the music now to play the music i'm going to write another function so right above the for loop i'm going to say local function the name of this function is going to be play music inside the parentheses i'm going to pass sound inside the function i'm going to check to see if there's a sound playing already i'm going to say if playing then we're going to stop that sound so it's going to be playing colon stop if there's not a sound currently playing we're going to go ahead and start it so we'll say sound colon and play and then we're going to set that playing variable equal to the sound later on we're going to come back to this function and add volume control but for now that's good so down here inside this function what i'm going to do is i'm going to run that function so playing music and the sound that i'm going to pass to it is the one that's selected and that's going to be from the music folder and from the music folder we're going to find it by saying track dot text so this will be the name of the sound and it's going to look in that music folder to find it once it finds that sound it's going to pass it through the function here so that's going to be stored in the sound variable here if there's already a sound playing it's going to stop it and then start the new sound all right so let's go ahead and test this part and see if it's working all right so let's go ahead and open up the menu so now in addition to updating the text here we should also hear some sound all right there we go so we got some sound and if we try to select a new one you can see that it stopped the previous sound and then started the new one all right so now that that's working let's go ahead and work on our volume controls we're going to start the new line of code right below the music playing function. For this one, I'm going to start by saying volume up, dot, mouse button, one click. And then I'm going to say colon, connect, and then function. Inside this function, we're going to say if, playing, then, so if there's a sound currently playing. Once we know that a sound is currently playing, we want to adjust its volume, but we don't want to increase it past the maximum, which is 1 or 100%. So let's go ahead and check the volume level currently. We'll say if, playing, dot, volume, is less than 1, then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the volume. We'll say playing dot volume. It's going to be plus equals. And then on the other side, we're going to say 0.1. So this is going to take the current volume level and add 0.1 to it, which is going to be like a 10% increase. In addition to increasing the volume, we also want to change the size of our volume bar. To do that, we can start by saying volume bar dot size. And that's going to be equal to udem2 dot new. Inside the parentheses, the x scale is going to be equal to the volume of the sound. So we can get that by saying playing dot volume. The x offset is going to be zero. For the Y, that's going to be 1. And then for the Y offset, it's going to be 0. We'll also update the text on the label. So let's say volume bar dot text. And that's going to be equal to. This is going to be a little bit weird, but we're going to say math dot floor. Inside the parentheses, it's going to be playing volume. So playing dot volume. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. And then we're going to add 0 0.5 to that. So the reason we're doing that, we're multiplying by 100 to get a value between 0 and 100. And then we're adding 0 0.5 to that so that it can round it correctly. If you don't add the 0 0.5, there's some weird issues with multiplying by decimals, so it's best just to leave it like this, and that'll give you the correct numbers. All right, so that completes the volume up. Volume down is going to be almost exactly the same, so let's just go ahead and copy this right here. We're going to change this to volume down. Instead of adding, we're going to be subtracting, and here for our check, we want to make sure this is greater than 0. The rest of it we can leave the same, so let's go ahead and try it out now and see if our volume control works. Let's go ahead and start by selecting a sound. It may be a little bit hard to hear through the mic, but I'm going to go ahead and try increasing the volume. You can see it increases from 50 to 60, and the bar gets a little bit bigger. So that's going to be the max volume. If I keep clicking, nothing else happens. And then the same is going to happen for the volume down. So I can click this to decrease it. And it goes all the way to zero. All right, so everything looks good so far. So the last thing I want to do is program the button here so that when I click on it, the sound stops playing. To do that, we're going to begin right below the volume down function. So here we're going to say stop dot mouse button one click. Colon connect. And then function. Inside this function, we're just going to check to see if there's a sound playing. If there's a sound playing, then we're going to stop it. So we'll say playing colon stop. And then we're just going to reset the current playing text back to the default. So to do that, we'll say current dot text. 
is going to be equal to quotation marks. And then we're going to say currently playing. And then our colon. All right, so that should wrap everything up. So just as a quick recap, we have our variables up top, which are references for the different objects inside of our frame. We have our music button function, which is going to open and close our frame. Our play music function is going to start our sound. The volume up and volume down functions adjust the volume of the sound. Our stop button will stop the sound if there's one playing. And then this for loop here loops through the music folder and creates a button for each sound. Let's go ahead and test everything together now and make sure it's working. Okay, so I'm going to open up the music folder. Let's go ahead and start a sound. And then I'm going to use the stop button to stop it. You can see that it stops the sound and it also resets the label to currently playing. If you want to add more sounds into your folder, you can. Just go ahead and select the music folder and then add a couple new sounds to it. So I added a couple more. If there's some scaling issues for the buttons when you load into the game, you can come to the grid layout and adjust this number right here. If it looks like they're not fitting in the frame, then you can just decrease this number right here. All right, so here's my menu with a couple more sounds added, and you can see everything still fits on the screen here. This video is getting kind of long, so let's go ahead and wrap it up here. If there's anything else you want to see for this music GUI, just let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.